Hello again. Okay, we're going to move on. We're going to change this now so it's not just a tech demo as it is at the moment. All we've got right now is something like this, if you've been following along. Really, that's that's not a game. It just goes straight into the sort of sh shooting, ship spawning thing. Um, and if we have a look at what we're actually aiming for, We've got more of a game, we've got a menu, we've got music, we've got some animation for this menu, we've got buttons that work. We transition properly between the game and the menu and then we've got a HUD and all sorts of stuff. So what we have at the moment isn't really a game by that sort of standard. So we're going to progress it a bit. We're going to add in the menu, refactor the document class because at the moment the document class just handles the, the actual shooting part of the game. I'm going to take all of this code out of the the document class and put it into a, a different class, one that just works with the um, the main content of the game. I'm going to add a menu screen and we'll look at setting up a, a library font that we can use, maybe even add two just so we've had a bit of practice. So to start with, I'm going to jump to the timeline, I'm going to look at my keyframes and when working with different scenes of a game. I, I like to use the timeline. You don't have to. You can use things known as states where you just swap between the state of a game. So you could have one keyframe but in your code you'd have a state for the menu so different stuff would be on based on the menu. Have a state for the main game. But in Flash we've got this timeline we may as well make use of it. So in this particular case my, my actual shooty bit is going to be on frame 3. So I'm going to click the keyframe we've got and drag it to uh, to frame three. First frame I'm going to reserve for a loading screen, which I'll eventually show you. So we'll stick in some holding text. Loading screen. And we'll just leave that there. So we know that that frame is eventually going to be a loading screen. So I will show you how to do a proper loader that uses the amount of bytes and and so on that have been loaded to get a percentage Ooh, if my mouse survives but we'll do that later what I'm going to do is insert a blank keyframe on the second keyframe and this is going to be our menu so I'll start by just dropping the name of the game point click win and to make sure that it's dead center I'm going to go to the properties I'm going to set the X position to 0, set the width to match the screen, so 500, and uh, make sure it's centered. Yeah. So that should be dead center now. What I do want to look at is setting up fonts. So in this particular game, I really only, only use one font, so we'll set that one up now. Normally you'd select your text field and just pick a font. So we might say, right, I don't want times. I want to use, I don't know, Verdana. Which is fine, that would work. But let's say we've got, if I just duplicate this, let's actually structure the menu out. So we've got four things here. If we have one that says start game. Another one for instructions maybe. And final one for, I don't know, let's have key combos. That's all fine, but what if I don't want to, to use that font anymore? Well, I've got to go to each one, or select them all, and change the font. Then if I've got a different font on other, other frames, I've got to find that, replace it, and it all gets very boring. The best thing to do, it's also best for when you're coding later on, because at the moment, really, these could just be static text. There's no reason for these to be dynamic, so let's just set them all as static. Static text embeds itself into the SWF. If you don't know what that means, it means that this particular character, the graphic for this P, gets saved into the SWF file. Later on, when we come to do scores and so on, we're going to use dynamic text, like we did in the first series, and dynamic text, by default, isn't saved into the SWF. So we've got to embed it. You can do that literally for each text field if you want to, but by far the best way is to go to the library, 
right click and make a new font. So I'm going to make a new font, I'm going to give it a name, I'm going to call this project font. Choose the family that you want to work with. I think in the end I actually used Orator or something like that. So select your font and then you choose here the, the characters that you want to embed. We could just tick all. If you're going to use lots of different languages, just tick all. I'm going to untick that. I'm going to use uppercase, lowercase, numerals and punctuation. We could go to the action script here. If you ever want to make a font, uh, not make a font, but use a font when you spawn a dynamic text field, you can actually spawn them in code. You'd want to use this font by linkage. So you could tick that box. I'll leave it on. I'll um, just untick that then. But the important thing is that we've, we've made a name. We've chosen the uh, characters to embed. We pressed OK. So we now have a library in our font, uh, a library in our font, a font in our library. And if we go back to these text fields, if I just shift select them all, go to the properties, and instead of using Vedana, if I go right to the top and choose project font, they'll now all use the project font set in the library. So if at any point I want to change the font throughout my game, I don't have to go to each individual text field. I can just go to my project font here, double click on the A, and just pick, I don't know, something like, what's near it, OCR. Very different font. So there's the orator. Press OK, and we've suddenly got OCR everywhere instead. Now, I don't actually want that, so I'm going to just knock it back. But you can see that it changes every instance of that project font. So it's by far and away the, the quickest way to do things. We might have a different font here. Let's let's have another one that we're going to use as the hood. So we could have a hood font. Again, embed what you think you're going to need. Uppercase, lowercase, numerals, punctuation. Probably do for me. And that one, I don't know. I'm not going to use this, but you might. I'll just set it as Vedana. So we've got two fonts now, and we could make use of either of them. So that's setting up a font, keeping things consistent. I'm just going to uh, structure this a bit. Oops. I'll eventually come back and polish this off before the game's finished. The actual layout's not important, as long as you understand what I'm doing. And what I'm going to do is make this start game into a button. So I'm going to select it, right click, convert to symbol, and I'm going to make it a button. Set the registration in the middle, not that it really matters. And let's give it a name. If I call it btn underscore start game, it's a bit of a naming convention. I'm not going to export it because we don't need to. I'm not, I'm not going to spawn it with action script. And I'm going to give it an instance name. So I'll call this, I've already used btn start game now. If I do btn start game without the underscore this time. btn start game, so that's the instance name that I can use in my action script. But, if I play the game now, it's not going to work for one thing, because it's just going to play through and we'll get lots of errors. Oh, maybe not errors, I was expecting errors then, but not to worry. Problem we have is that we're not stopping on any of the frames. So really, we want to stop on this menu screen. So I'm going to click on the keyframe, go to the actions, and just type stop in two brackets. Stop. And we should get errors. I'm not quite sure why we didn't. <laughs> Spawning ships over the top of it. So the the document class is still trying to, to work. We're not actually on the right frame for it. We don't have a turret, for example. I was expecting some sort of error referring to the turret, but not to worry. So what we need to do is restructure the code a little bit so we can actually set the game up to work through the menu. And to do that I'm just going to go to my document class because at the moment the document class contains all the code for the running of the, the main part of the game. So instead of controlling, controlling the whole game it's just going to control the actual shooting bit which I'm going to call a level. So I'm going to go to file, save as and I'm going to rename it to level. 
save it in the same place as everything else. But this time it's going to be called level.as. And I'll just update the class name to be level, update the constructor to be level, and replace this part of the trace. We don't actually need the trace, but we'll keep it. Save that. Reopen my document class and delete all the code that is no longer used. So we don't need these variables in our document class anymore. Document class is just going to have a constructor and do nothing else for now. Don't need this function. Get rid. So that's what the document class should look like. Pretty much what we started with when we first made it. We don't even need these. Get rid of, uh, sorry, we need the movie clip one. We don't need the import event. Get rid of so the class responsible for the main SWF now does very little. We'll come back to it later and put some stuff in, but we don't need it. Let's, uh, I'm not going to close it, I'll keep it open. But Now if we test the game, we don't get the ships flying around, we just get a trace of made a game. So what we need to do is be able to jump to frame 3 and for our level code to run, which it doesn't at the moment, we haven't linked it to anything. But before we worry about that, let's actually get this button working. So we've set up the start game button, it's called BTN start game. And at this point I'm going to code in the timeline, might as well while we're here. So I've stopped on that frame, add a click listener to the start button. So BTN start, start game dot add event listener mouse event dot click now we don't have to import mouse event here because we're in the actual FLA that sort of stuff gets imported anyway I think flash will import it in a second anyway trying to be smart and it really doesn't need to do it but not to worry so we've added the event listener what can we have the function called let's just call it start game nice and simple Make the function, I cannot spell tonight. Function start game. Responding to a mouse event this time. And there we go, the imports happened at the top. We don't need that, you can get rid if you want. And all I want to do is play. So when I click the start game button, I want to play. So let's save that. Press the start game button, and we you can see that we quickly play and come back. And that's because we don't stop on the third frame. And even if we did, nothing's going to happen there. Let's do it anyway. Let's stop. Test it. Click start game. We now stop on the third frame. The turret still faces the mouse, but we've not got anything else going on. So we need to fix that. We've got this level.as sat here gathering dust. And we need to make use of it. So it does everything we want, we just haven't used it yet. So I'm going to go back to my timeline. Get to, I should really get rid of this. Hide it down the bottom. I have a habit of leaving my action script box floating for no reason. We're on the third frame here. We've got the, uh, the turret in the middle. We could just convert that into a new movie clip and use it as our game. What does our level extend? It's a movie clip. But... All the code we've done relies on this turret being in the center of a 500 by 500 box. So I'm just going to restructure it a bit. I'm just going to draw something on top of it. Draw a box. Delete the fill. Double click the lines so we've got them all. And I'm going to set them to 0, 0 position. And set the width and height to the same as my stage. So that I've got a shape that's exactly the same as my stage. I'm then going to click on the keyframe to select everything, so I've got the turret and I've got the outline, and I'm going to convert that to a symbol. Set the registration to the top left, so that it's just going to be the same as it always was. The 0, 0 position will be the top left of this new movie clip. Export it for action script, but call it level as well, because that's the name of the file we just used. Make sure it's a movie clip, not a button. Export for action script and press OK. So that is now a level instead of just being nothing. 
and that should automatically pick up this AS file that we've named. If you make a library symbol with the same name as an action script file in the same place, it will look to that script for code and you can test that by going to your library, right clicking on the level and clicking edit class and it takes you to that class, that AS file that we've made so we can tell that it's linked up there. Now if we save everything, test the game, click the start button, we go to the, the actual shooty part of the game. So it's, it's taking the structure of a game now, we have a menu, we've got a frame reserved for a loading screen and we can navigate to the game. So it's coming along, it's starting to get there, we do need to speed up a bit because I only have about five weeks before the class need all these videos. I'm going to go back to my menu, this button's a bit dull so I'm going to go inside of it, edit it a little bit. If you've never used a button, you've got an up frame, which is how it looks by default, an over keyframe. So if I stick a new keyframe in there and maybe change the font colour, change that to a golden colour, that's how it looks when your mouse is over the button. Down is how it looks when it's held down. I'm just going to put a normal frame so it looks the same as it does when it's just over. And then the hit keyframe is just, just a shape. So instead of having the text there, I could delete that. I'm just going to draw a box over the top of it though. So this is the area that the mouse can hit this button. So if I just draw a box, maybe delete the outline of the box and the text hidden behind it, if I can click on it. I'll cut that out for a second, delete the text, paste in place. So we've just got a hit box on that last keyframe. Test the game now. You can see that by default it's unchanged, but if we hover over it, hover anywhere over that hit area, and it goes yellow. So, not the most staggering button in the world, but you can see the logic of it. Click it, we start the game. Bit of structure. Let's see, how are we for time? I don't want to cram too much into each video. If I've got time now, I could just go and do another video rather than cramming too much into one. Yeah. I'll leave it at that for this video. Make sure that you understand the, the concept of a library font. So we've got a font saved in our library that we can embed into the project so that people who don't have the font will be, still be able to see the SWF as you intended it because the, uh, the characters get saved into the file. Also makes it much easier to update your text fields. And we've uh, restructured a little bit, so make sure you understand how we've uh, translated the code from our other file, from what was our document class, is now just a standard class within the game. Did I cover anything else new there? Possibly not. Yeah, we'll leave this one at that for now, and I'll um, try and get the next video done quite quickly. See you soon.